What's up? Unfortunately, bro, there's no dominating when you're playing DDD. Not this format. But when you play tier, there's... As long as you compile it correctly, you're going to have a good time. Ah, still on the fence if I want to play 45. It honestly works fine. I just don't like the games where I clog too many hand traps. What is the math on this again? I don't know if I've done the actual math for 45. I've done it for 44 and 43. Uh, 45. 15 hand traps in a hand of 5. 1. Okay, so I have a 55% chance to see two. Oh, in the future? I don't know. Right now, um, it's hard, very hard to say for like the foreseeable future. Cash tier of tiers is going to be the most broken deck of all time, like by a long shot, for however long they keep that deck afloat. They'll probably have that deck alive for about a month, and then they'll it'll still be alive after the ban list, but they're just going to kind of do something like they similar did in the OCG. Okay, so 55% chance to see, let's compare this to Sword Soul. They're playing 15 and a 40. They have a 63% chance, like an 8% chance higher to see more than one. Okay, so we're doing 45. Um, I'm curious what it is if I do 43 on 13. It's 49%. So my chances drop 6%, so... Oh, what about Book of Eclipse? Am I cool with that? 48, so one out of every two... One out of every two games. What if I'm 44 and 14? 52%. That seems more balanced. Um, and then if I'm playing... Um, so the cards that all work side by side has a two card combo. 21. I'm playing 13 starters. So 13. Yeah. They're going to be playing Book of Eclipse next format. Damn it. Thirteen starters. Population of opening one. Okay. So I have... 85% chance to see one starter and out of so one out of every 10 games I'm not going to see a starter okay I'm playing 21 cards that interact together okay Okay, so one out of every 10 games means I'll brick, which I don't think I can play around that anyways. What if I play 43? That doesn't make sense. 
Um, How does that make sense? Oh, this goes down to 70, 80%. And then if I play 43. No, 11 hand traps isn't enough. You honestly need like two to three, like sometimes you need three hand traps to honestly stop tier from doing their thing. They open good enough. The list was actually doing pretty good yesterday, so I don't know. When I was playing 15 and 45. Seems, I don't know if I feel comfortable with 45 though. 43, uh, so 13 hand traps and a 43 card list. So yeah, it's that, and then as opposed to 45 and 15. Okay, so my chances drop by 6%, right? Um, Hmm. Problem is though my side patterns. These are all kind of mandatory. I think I have to play 45 and just accept it. 45, 21. Seems 3% less consistent. This opposed to uh, 43, it's 2 to 3% less consistent. That's not a big deal. I think this these numbers just make more sense. I still have an 80% chance to see. Damn, I don't like the fact that one out of every two games I'm going to, or what? One out of every eight, sorry, two out of every 10 games, I'm going to, well, with the one card starters, it's more like nine. Okay. This is working fine. Um, I did lose to myself a couple times yesterday, though. It's fine. I'll play this. The side deck's perfect. I wish I could play Dark Wolf or Regeki. This does answer tier really well though. Nibs, talents is insane against them too. Yeah, you guys, I, I, I don't record, I don't record when I play tier. Like I played one tier match this morning. Um, my buddies wanted to just play test. So while they were play testing, I just played a match and I played this guy on speedroids. I don't think I've ever played against someone. He wasn't toxic during the match, but there was like two intervals where like, this guy was playing speedroids, and I opened Havness, use Havness, and he's like, of course you have that. And I'm just, he's like, resolve your fucking card. I resolve Havness, and the game actually went to three, um, and the third game was crazy. Like, the rest of the match was fine, he was fine, and then all of a sudden, like, I top deck Rhino Heart, and then um, when I had, like, 12 cards in my deck, because I milled most of it, summoned the Rhino Heart, and this guy, like, just, like, lost, he's like, He's like, of course, and like capitals, he's like, he's like, of course you fucking open that. And then like, he like exits, like leaves. And I'm like, well, you're playing Speedroid. Like the deck is not good right now. It's it's actually like not terrible right now, but it's not powerful enough. Um, and uh, I'm not going to lie, the deck can extend through a decent amount of things. Um, this guy messaged me after, I don't know if I can see it still. Oh, no, 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 I, I can't see it. This guy messaged me after and was like, he's like, just swearing at me like blocked me so i couldn't respond he's like swearing at me he's like i hope you get into a fucking car crash i was like holy like i've never had that that aggressive behavior before like, i could play the replay but like i'm not going to because um i know you guys don't want to watch me playing tier so um literally if i feel if if i wanted to go all the way to a thousand rating like does anyone know what high rating is on dueling book like what's considered high rating i really don't know if someone could tell me out of the the people that are in here, that'd be nice. Then we know when we can submit our duels to DB Grinder. If I ever get to that stage, I don't play Dueling Book enough, I think. This guy's high rated.
So I don't think this is classified as high rating. Oh, damn it. Um, Jerusalem can leave. Maybe not. It's fine. I'm frozen. If he ashes this, I actually just die. I was debating on just giving up Druid Swarm, so I at least had some recursion with two hand traps. But I think this, regardless of how our turn goes, should be enough. I just let that go. Doesn't look like he has anything. Oh, shoot. How did I just mistaken the two for each other? Yeah. Oh. Does he not know the death? Or is he just confused on the game state? My brother, should I submit my list today? It's a good question. Um, do you know if you can add, you can pre-reg for a, um, a regionals and not submit your deck list? Like, do you have to do both of them? Uh, so this will go here. This will go here. Up and one. I mean, there's no card in the game, I think, that responds to that, so. Well, there's Ghost Ogre, but who the hell would Ghost Ogre or Griffin? I wonder if anyone's actually playing Ghost Ogre right now. I feel like a good time Ghost Ogre could actually throw someone off guard. I might just play it just for fun. Nib kills me right here. Man, I don't think I'm ever going to cut one front from the list again. I think I explained this the last one, but I think very brief, like very briefly, but 
Um, there's this crazy, crazy interaction where like um, I played Exo Sister at my last locals, and it was just insane. Like, um, uh, it's hard to multi-focus here, but multitask. Um, Basically, he bestialed my Griffin when I, or my Swirl Slime, when I only had Swirl Slime and Griffin, which you need to, ooh. Yeah, I don't want this going down. I'm okay with Magma, but. All right, so I can play, yeah, that's his only hand trap. Um, yeah, Ghost Bell is so necessary for that interaction interaction because it's very hard to deal with um, Drew Swarm when it's on the board. It's like a free clear for any of your big interruptions. It's annoying as hell. Uh, declare, and I'm going to banish, and probably banish. Let's get these two out. The one reason why I think Didi can do okay now is because of this card. The trap is so good. There's, sure, there's a lot of things that really destroy us, but this card's actually crazy. Like, still. Uh, swelling beads. The mic is poverty. Yo, my bad. I'm using uh, the laptop mic. The mic is poverty. That's jokes. <laughs> the mic is poverty. That's actually jokes. Uh, let's see. Um, I think I might get rid of one, so I'm not playing into uh. Yeah. Mm, do I think he's on super poly? If I get rid of both of these, overlay, overlay. So probably all I need. Um. Well, all I have to do is summon it to your name, so it really doesn't matter. Um, we're going to banish. And probably just get rid of this. Oh, shoot, it's an investor. Uh, that was funny. Um, then we're gonna use so Okay. Uh, he does play Super Poly? Of course he does.
I didn't think he was going to be playing Super Poly, to be quite honest. So he has a... Okay. Not a lot of people on Super Poly right now. I'm going to be forced to take uh, this, unfortunately. Should be fine. This and this and this and this. Is more than enough. I had some. Yeah, I'm ashing this. I wonder if he plays talents too. That's gonna ruin me if he plays talents. Okay, I wonder what he's gonna do. If he normal summons Sheer and he's in a tight spot, he's probably gonna have to use this for material. Oh, shit. Uh, that's good. Nope. He has a Druid's Worm. Can stop that and then I can take. Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to win this. I'm going to stop it with Caesar. Then you'll have nothing else. Yeah, it's gonna have to use Druid's Worm here. He's gonna it's gonna force this and then I'll just take it. That should be wraps. I don't know what else he could extend with. Does my mic actually sound that bad? Just gonna listen to myself talk. There's no way you can play around this. Yeah, that's it. That is reps. They just lose their boost. Um, I can simply just echoey, yeah, probably because I'm on my main floor. I have no more fusions. He's at 7k, uh, Drus. Yeah, I'm just gonna summon, summon, uh, Baron. Yeah, this is, this is wraps. <clears throat> N dash S. Oh yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> I have Griffin here. I was gonna pop it and then try to uh go for battle. Well she has Havness Imperm, which he wouldn't. Or Havness uh
Yeah, he's your inhabitus. Um, hmm. Can let happiness come down and then. Um, hmm. I'm going to do this to boost. I got a bit greedy here. Does he have another name? I doubt he does. If he has another name, I'm going to lose to how greedy I just got. He does. Okay, shit. Hmm. Can negate that, and then he might go for Kaleido. I have to negate with Baron here. Yeah, I got greedy. Oh, whoa, 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 what the fuck? Yeah. Can you even see that? Okay. Oh, fuck, it's chain blocking. Yeah, I got greedy. I'm going to probably lose to that. Sure. Um... This is going to be a good game. I'm probably going to lose to how greedy I just got there. I thought I had it in the bag like in two seconds. Okay. Send him early. At least this is boosted so I can swing and then swing for three. So I'm over this, how much right now? It's 30, sorry, it's 46 right now. 35 is going to take 11. Imperm should save my ass. Um, hmm. Can't pin on one of those, any of those back. Um, Can I go for game? Well, not necessarily. I can pop his Perlerino and then hurt really hinder his follow up, um, which probably should have been done from the start. I got so greedy there, it wasn't even funny. Because um, I can pin on that back 1200 or. Yeah, 1,200, 42. It's not going to kill him because he's up. It might actually. 
Yeah, I got super greedy. Oh well. This is like a real life game state. I definitely would have taken some more time to analyze the board state. Zeus. Zeus is going to be okay, I guess. Um, just thinking I can kill him here. Infirm is going to hold me up for the next turn anyways. Pop that. I can recycle, so I don't care much about that. So he's taken, yeah. Yeah, and then 12. Hmm. Yeah, that kind of sucks. I got too greedy. Hmm. Not having these is kind of hurting me too. I already pendulum summoned. Um, probably just going to sit on the XYZ. Can I make the fusion? No. The links. I don't think I bother going for uh, Hello. Yes. Sure. Well, thank you. Oh, just called it. Oh man, Kelbeck is insane here. No, right now. Oh. Jeez, this sucks. Okay, I'm getting punished now. Yo, I'm getting punished big time. Damn.
So what does he have? Oh shoot, this is bad for me. This is pretty bad. Yep. Yeah, I didn't anticipate to have another tier name in hand with the. He had a pretty good hand. I'm probably just going to get punished here. That Kelbeck draw was crazy. If I was this Speedroy player right now, I would actually be screaming at the laptop. That guy would have lost it if he was in my position. Damn, that Kelbeck draw was insane. That was definitely the best card he could have drew. Kelbeck or Aguido were the two best cards he could have drawn. Uh, his mills were good too, actually. You know what? What's he using? Imperm, he still gets. He's going to be able to summon the Rhino Heart. Rhino Heart triggers. He's going to trade off of this. Queen or Dirty? It's Queen. Oh. oh. It's like, when did Sully kick Graveyard? Is that how that happened, or did Sulik hit? Yeah, it did. Sulik hit then. Okay, so that does work. Okay. Okay, then I have to let that go. Uh, that's extra deck. Yeah, this sucks. I'm getting punished big time. Getting punished.
He probably thinks I have, or did I use head on already? Mm -hmm. I don't have a whole lot to my arsenal. Yeah. He's going to be able to go into Merle now. Damn. I'm getting punished. I got too greedy. Yeah, I got to let him resolve that. I mean, his hand was nuts, but I don't know. It's hard to say. The happiness was what, like, really threw everything off. We we're definitely going to watch this one after because I definitely want to take a replay of this. I might send this into DB Grinder even if I lose this. Apparently, this guy's a pretty big name. I don't know why so many people are watching this. If he can't kill me this turn, I do have a chance. I do have a chance because he put Machine X back. I do have a chance if he can't kill me this turn. This card actually might come in a lot of like a big time clutch here. This is this is gonna be a pretty good game, I think. I don't even know if you could say I was getting punished for, like, getting greedy because I think I did what I should have done. It's just he had the other name to send off Rhino, which I didn't expect. Yeah, I got to do it. Solik will screw me up if he is able to grab Solik. All right, so now he's going to go into... Yeah, so he can't kill me and he can't swing over this. Yeah, he can't swing over this. Oh, you guys can actually see how many people are viewing on this too? Oh yeah, you can. What am I saying? You can see what they're looking at too. What are these things called? Uh, counter there. As he's used. F He's gonna have to get rid of Bear because then my follow up's very aggressive if I if he gets rid of this. Imperm definitely clutches me here. So it depends. Can he you can't you can't you can't kill me here, which is nice. He might set up camp. Oh he doesn't have him early. Mm, he has two shufflers. It's a little bit hard. I wish. How does he kill me though? He can't. Dark. Oh, maybe he plays access code. If he plays access code, I got a scoop. He might play access code. Yeah, but what 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 can he do though? He can summon Rukalos. Rukalos swings. He's crashing. It's not enough damage. Because Rukalos is eighteen, and then eighteen fifty. That's thirty. 
It's not enough damage. Why is he doing that? Why is he? Yo, what the fuck? He's actually using. Oh, is he taking it back? Sure. If he plays access code, I'm screwed. He may play access code. Some people. Oh shit. Yeah, they both die. Uh, 6.50. Yeah, he's playing this really weird. So he's going to make Sprint Summer Rukalos. It's not enough. I can kill him. I'll be able to kill him here. Ooh, this is a tight game, man. This is a good game. If I can beat him, this is going to be a crazy game. Crazy match at that. So this is already my grave. Oh, shit. When did I mill this? Did I mill this when he did a bunch of mills? I think I focused so much on his mills that I actually disregarded this completely. I could add it back um, one of my fusions or my links. Damn, I missed this. I think if I caught this, I was easily winning the game. Now it might be a bit hard because... Yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay. Oh, dang, that sounds crazy. Oh, yo, I have game. Peniel summon to not even rage. Um, summon Siegfried, that's game. Siegfried, because Siegfried is he's at twelve, yeah, six Siegfried. Siegfried will be able to crash over it if I'm not missing anything. Yeah. So I'm gonna add I don't know what I'm gonna add to be quite honest. Siegfried's going to win me this game. I don't think it matters what I add here. Because Orthros pop, get out of scale, scale this, add back, pendulum summon two, right? I'm not missing anything. Pop, pop, scale, add back Griffin, pendulum two, this game. This game is crazy.
This game's crazy. I just won this. I'm gonna just place them here because I'm out of links. No, there's no point. This guy's cheese, he's cheese. Yeah, these guys get so salty. Are you ask are you seriously asking me if you can go to battle phase with me having nothing? You essentially have something, so I have to ask you. Alright, he's cooked now. Sometimes I want to keep headhunt in, head hunt in, for the sole reason that they can reverse crack me. But maybe we're not going to touch on that today. I don't need rage. How many cards is this? It's fine. I also don't want to see this card ever. Yeah, that was a really good game. I know. Like I, I technically have to ask him if he has something, so I don't know what he's what he's cheesed about. Ooh, this is pretty good, man. This will this is gonna protect me on my turn too, which is nice. These two should end the, the this should end their turn. Oh fuck! <laughs> it doesn't matter now. Maybe who knows. This is this is really good into Bistials and Shufflers. Well, Bistials because you can send Typhon too. I find it funny because you're gonna have people that are gonna be mad if you don't go to, if if they'll be like wait in main phase and do something stupid, but then they'll have people like this, so you can't please everyone. I'm gonna meet this with an emperor. Yeah, He's, he's literally getting watched by like 12 to 15 players. Um, <clears throat> getting beat by DDD. Who knows though? There's also a solid chance he'll just beat me games 2 and 3 because this deck is insane. I like opening three hand traps. I like it. I think he's stuck now. He can link, but he can't even go into sprint, which is going to hurt him. Unless he has Merle. If he has Merle, it's pretty good. <clears throat> no field spell is good for me, too. Yeah, he's hurting. No, not necessarily. I'm going to hold my ghost pill. There shouldn't really, unless he has Merle, there shouldn't really be anything else he can do right now. Unless he would have started with uh, Caldo if he opened it, as opposed to the Sheeran. 
I play this deck. I play Tier a lot, so I kind of I can read their plays pretty well. Sometimes you just can't because their hand's insane. It doesn't matter, but the benefit of being a tier player is you. It's pretty. You can kind of read. You can read their players' plays a lot more when you play against them. It's the only way you're gonna ever have a chance in this matchup. This matchup is insane. Yeah, regardless of the outcome of this game, I'm, I'm probably just going to film this after for a YouTube video because I'm like well overdue for a YouTube video. Oh. Oh, what time is it? It's almost three. Oh, he's got silly. Mm hmm. What's he doing? I'm trying to pick on what's happening here. What's going on? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Rhino Heart's pretty good here. It's fine. I completely forgot he, uh, just destroys that end phase. Yo, what's going on? Yeah, he milled. I, it caught me off for a second, too. He had, he summoned it off instant fusion. I was lost for a second, too. I was like, what the hell is going on? He's like, if you have Skullmeister, just use it. I'm like, what? And I'm like, see, I see instant fusion in the grave. I'm like, oh, yeah, instant fusion. Instant fusion is nuts. That's why they say... If you open instant fusion, there's not really any losing, to be quite honest. The cow's gonna be rough. Rukalos and uh Kalos and um, Solik and uh, uh, that might be crime actually. If this is game two, it's probably a crime. Mm. No shufflers. Have missed. Didn't he use that? Oh no, you Sharon. Pretty well the best I can do. Well, I gotta hope I top deck something. Ooh. Yo, are you seeing this? If this is Sulik or a crime though, I'm not winning this game.
Yeah, smart. I would do the same thing. Oh, Habness. At least you don't have to deal with Habness. Yeah, I already know what's happening here. He's gonna so like shuffle this back. I have no plays if he shuffles this back. If he if he bounced it, then yes, I do have plays, but EDD tier. Yeah, you have to play like the full Ashizu, or majority of the Ashizu cards, like Kalbeck and stuff. Ooh, not summoning Rhino Heart's gonna hurt him. Is he gonna use Sepelia? Oh my god. Okay, cool. Bro. <laughs> I think I'm just going to have to make uh, like a five material Zeus if I really want a chance because he has shufflers. Shufflers are live. Um, That face down is a soul leak, I think. I'm stuck. If I clear his board, Zeus isn't going to do me much if I do it. So if I... I can't play under a shuffler. The shuffler is what's hurting me right now. All these cards leave and don't trigger. But if Sully's face down, I'm probably losing this game. But if that's a Sully, I play really hard into it here. I might just have to make a four materials use. Because the shuffler is what's hurting me bad. I'm down bad because the shuffler. Hmm. I don't think there's any chance. Yeah, I just gotta do this. Oh shit. Correct. Stapelia. Oh shit. So this is my only row to play then? Okay. Does he have Sully? He'd trigger it here if he does. I feel like he would because he used to Peli on my level 4. He doesn't have Sully. The Shuffler is going to give me a fucking pain in the ass.
Yeah, I forgot. What, there was some guy the other day that was trying to tell me Stapelia. Like, when it leaves the field, the counter, it's still negated. I'm like, dude, just read the card. It says it's part of its effect is negate the effects of anything with a predicate counter on it. If it leaves the field, it's not... It's funny because he's actually pretty good with tier. It was a mirror match. He was, pretty, he was actually pretty well balanced with tier. He's actually a pretty good player. And he thought that's how Sapelia worked. I was like, no, it's not. Like, how do you not know that? To be fair, though, I just completely forgot it. It made my guy level 2, and I use that effect to hinder the opponent, like, almost every game. That isn't tier, anyways. Oh, shit. Heartbeat? Yikes. Oh, heartbeats, GG's. Uh, yeah, that's heartbeats, GG's. Hmm. Yeah, heartbeat is GG's and a half. That was a smart play. He doesn't have follow up. There's not much I'm doing here. I don't even know if I swing. Swing over. He's just going to play on my turn. Yeah, he's just going to play on my turn. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it's got to have a defeat. Damn, that was really good. That was insane. <clears throat> so we have Jay Soft twelve hand traps. Talents for protection, okay. I'll probably consider Crow over this. So I have all of these cards can stop my opponent from doing stuff, which is nice. See what happens. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, it's about to be crazy. Hell no. Hell no, bro. Okay, cool. I think he loses. Good evening, sir. It's 3 o'clock where I am. I'm EST. Toronto time. You're missing a crazy game. Yeah, you're right. The level one. Yeah. But the effect negation does not stay. What I was trying to say earlier. All right, I don't think any of you see what's about to happen here. Type it in the comments right now if you think you know what's going to happen. He's probably thinking I'm trying to summon Baron here.
So I gotta summon this. I gotta take a piss. One second. Okay, okay. Okay. Turn to So I don't have, it's fine. He, oh, he plays Super Poly. I know he plays Super Poly. I actually forgot about that at this point. Um, if I just use this, link these both off, I can Fusion Summon, summon that back. That's all I need, right? This is a Fusion Summon. Well, yeah, I can banish all those and then I just get that back. The nice thing is that they can't super poly this, which is the main problem card for them. I think he has super poly. Yep, he has super poly. So an activate from there. Shear in a special summon. He's got to know two names for me to be. Hmm. I don't really want him hitting any names. What if he's playing droplets?
Stopping the sharing completely is pretty good. Yeah, this should deal with the rest of his board. Yeah, Caesar Crow is so good. His shearing is a pain. You don't want that thing going through because then they have easier access to uh, Zeus, like rank four plays, and uh, you obviously don't want that. Man, this game is like holy, like it's low key anxious. Happiness? Ooh. I'm just going to be pretty good. Hmm. Stop Havis from coming out. He has to fusion summon. Havis milling three is dangerous, man. I don't know if I can let that happen. Yeah, I'm going to have to stop it. It's the mill three that I don't want happening because once he hits a mill five, it's hard. He's pretty well struggling against this as it is, but... The mill five is, I don't want him getting advantage pretty much. Just stopping him from getting advantage at this point. Oh, did he destroy Havnus already? Sucks him up. Um, swamp. Sure. This is not going to be easy for him. This can pop, but it's not going to have the greatest timing. So he's going to have to have another name for this to be effective. So he does. He does have two names. This guy's been opening a lot of names. I wish I'd get that when I play this deck. But taking this is pretty good. It cuts off. It restricts their access to uh, Elido pretty well. So he's normal summon. Yeah, this is wraps. This is game. The headhunt's gonna like ruin him here. He can't even target my monsters right now, which is insane. Because now he has to pop something. He's got to pop this. Bro, this card's insane. Literally says your opponent cannot target monster you control with card effects. That's so crazy. Bro, I don't remember the last time I played a game. In Yu-Gi-Oh, where I'm just like, I've just been so on my toes. This game is actually crazy. No. That's it. That was crazy. Okay, let's go watch that replay. I'm going to just hold the replay for a second. Yeah, Caesar has to... Oh, did I not boost Caesar? Sorry, Caesar has to boost itself, but... Um, yeah. yeah. That game was crazy. That was probably the craziest game that we've done on... Uh, on, like, any of these uh, live streams. That was insane. So I'm going to grab some water, and I'm actually going to put that replay on YouTube, and pro I'm probably going to send that to DB Grinder too, see if he posts it. That game was insane.
<laughs> um, go back. <laughs> I kind of like how Sword Soul is actually coming back into the game. Sword Soul is a pretty easy matchup for us, some like compared to a lot of things. So, okay, I'm gonna get some water. I'll go over that screen. Oh no. All right. <clears throat> All right, I missed a lot of comments here. Play two Midor and two Caldo, two Kalbeck, zero Guido. Yeah, it's hard to make the deck 40 cards. It's fun when you first play, but I feel like it, it gets kind of boring um, here at DED because it kind of just does the same thing. I find you're trying to turbo Beatrice a lot, like the rank sixes. Um, I actually have more fun playing tier on its own, to be honest. The Valiance Field spells, yeah. The problem with them is that they give your opponent a free, uh, a free. Uh, Giving tier a free interaction, like going second, is just too much, man. Because you already got to deal with, like, here's the thing the field spell, right? The Valiance field spell. They just topped a regional, like, top eight. I think the deck on its own is actually pretty good, especially that no one knows what the hell it does. Some stupid stats on that. Uh, this is a card I have a problem with. What is this? So, they have a fusion. Oh, this isn't released yet. That was crazy. Um, so, this is a problem I have with this card. There are two cards in the field zones, which they're always going to have something. The turn player, so they literally, if they have um, a Pearl Arena in hand, they'll do Pearl Arena and then they'll. Or they'll do this, and then they'll Pearl Arena, like, which is just game. Um, the turn player can target one effect monster your opponent's main monster zone. In the same column, they place that opponent's monster zone face up a continuous spell. Like, with, um, with Druusworm, like, with Druusworm in the format, if they drop Druusworm and you give them this, you're actually losing, like, your whole board. Like, that's the problem I have with those cards right now. So this, I think, is the biggest issue. And tier just does so much on your going second, so... Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm not a fan of the Valiant stuff. But they open up a lot of combos, which I like. Like, if this didn't have the restriction, I'd actually consider playing them. If, it didn't, if I also didn't have to play 15 hand traps right now. That's Yeah, so that's my thought on the Valiant stuff. Yep. So yeah, let's go watch that replay. I'm actually going to like make it a YouTube recording too, so if you guys are going to stick around for that, you can see the early YouTube video. Um, let's exit. I didn't switch anything, did I? Yeah, no, I didn't. Man, this card was insane. Like, It's not like it came up, but like he wasn't, no matter what he did, there was nothing in his deck that was going to out these three, like this card. You can't target anything. Like, Tyr can't deal with that unless they summon Babuska. So I was basically just trying to stop him from summoning a Babuska, but I'll go over that in a second. Alright, let's go over this replay. This replay was insane. Oh, this is the guy. I don't know if anyone's ever played against this guy, but this is the guy that, like, was playing... I was playing Tyr here. And this guy was playing... Uh, uh, Speedroid. 
literally like oh my god at the end of the game like i top decked a at the end of the match i top decked a rhino hurt summon rhino hurt yeah, there's a lot more people here now so if you guys want to hear this story like i played this guy um he goes first playing speed roid i drop a uh, haveness and he's like of course you have that he's like resolve i was like sorry man he's like he's like Sh i was like sorry man i play dd i get it and he's like shut up resolve your fucking card and i was like oh <laughs> so the rest of the game, the rest of the match was fine. Like he was just being like interactive and like talking normal. And then at the end of the game three, I top decked a rhino heart when I had like 12 cards left in my deck and there's two rhinos left in there. And then I summoned rhino heart and he's like in caps, like, of course. And he's like, just freaked out. It like just left. Uh, of course you fucking like just screaming at me through like chat and just left. And then this guy like sent me a private message that said, um, he's like, you're like just like screaming at me like in caps and he's just like i hope you die in a fucking car accident and i was just like what like i've never played against someone that aggressive in my life so yeah that sounds crazy but so that's how this game went but i was playing tier hey man you, you don't want to accept that it's a tier zero format go ahead don't don't blame someone for dropping a habits when they play three of it in a 40 card deck okay Okay, so I'm going to pause this because I'm going to record this uh, pause. Yeah, you're right. This does sound kind of echoey. Doesn't sound that bad. Okay. All right, so three, two, one. Yo, what is going on, guys? This is Jack. Why'd you here today? So today we're coming at you with a dueling book replay. So uh, this is currently being streamed uh, for the people, uh, for the bunch of people that are on stream right now. Congratulations, you're watching the live stream of this replay. So yeah, I decided I'd film this. Um, this is a replay against Tier. Um, against this is me, and then this is a uh, um, I don't know. Apparently, he's a pretty high rated player there's quite a few people watching i don't know enough of doing book to be honest and who's like good outside of like dash nash and stuff um but yeah so this was uh, against tier um and i decided to replay this because or post this replay uh mainly because um i just haven't posted a lot of content recently i'm kind of waiting for the regionals to happen and then post my deck list and kind of like a regional recap of how the regional went uh, playing DDDs. Um, I think I'm just fully fledged on just playing DDs at this point. I'm in between DDs and tier because I do primarily pilot tier in this format. Um, the thing is, is I don't want to just bring a tier deck to a bit large. If, if it was a YCS, yes, but um, um, at a regional setting, um, for me to just, I could like win the regionals with tier and it's just like, it's all the same stuff. Like everyone, every single weekend a tier deck wins. Uh, so it wouldn't be a big deal, to be honest, right? And if I did at least okay with DDs or actually did good, then it'd be like, oh, cool, right? And um, so, yeah, I thought I'd just try to do something. So, yeah, so this is going to be the deck I'm going to be bringing to regionals, uh, probably the exact list I'm running now. Um, I'll kind of go over that in a little bit. Um, yo, so, um, yeah, let's hop right into it. So, uh, for, oh, don't do the deck count yet. So, um we're going to go over the hands here. Um, I think I can do full screen here, right? I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I think F11 is full screen, right? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to screw around with anything. I'm not too good with technology, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, let's kind of go over what's going on here. So, I win the die roll. Uh, 40 for, uh, 45 versus 40. So, he's on 40. Um, we got Kepler one for one, Ash. So, three hand traps, right? Um, and then I have basically two Keplers in hand. He's got Terraforming, Sheeran, uh, Druus Worm. Like this is like a god, this is a god hand. And uh, outside of this, um, this could be, if this was like a Keldo or like Shuffler, so, like some sort of fairy, this would be like the god hand. Uh, but regardless, these four is like plenty. Like this is hard to deal with. Uh, so yeah, he opened insane. Uh, this guy's a pretty good player. Like he was, uh, um, I'm not gonna post a replay where the guy's like not the best pilot with tier. This guy did know what he's doing. Um, so yeah, it's good to, uh, have replays like that, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start off, uh, 
So one for one. So I'm going to go one for one ditch Kepler. The reason why I'm going to do this here is because I want to keep these three. I'm assuming he's on, there's a bunch of people watching and he was on 40 cards and he has a high rating. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume he's on tier. You should do that anyways. So uh, if he's on tier and he's not going to stop my plays through a bunch of hand traps, I have this to back myself up with, which is awesome. Typically, these are going to be all be protecting me against tier right now. Um, so I decided I'd keep all three of them and then I would just Kepler and then I can just kind of go from there. Um, so, because there's no point of me summoning Kepler, adding a Griffin, and then just activating one for one to summon a, uh, a Necro Slime or a Lamia, right? So, yeah, F11 is full screen. Okay, so let's just do F11. Oh, okay. Well, we're not going to do full screen today because it doesn't want to do it anyways. Um, so, so, you're going to let this resolve, right? Kepler effect. Grabs a gate. Um, so gate. So gate. This is the one card combo. Um, the uh, sorry, the one for one combo. I misclicked. I had Griffin. I just said misclick and just put it back. It's supposed to be Copernicus here. So Copernicus. Yeah. He. Uh, this guy wasn't too familiar with the deck. Um, so he was, but he wasn't. Um, so normal summon Copernicus, right? One for one combo. Go ahead and use Gilgamesh. Scale up two. So I'm going to scale Thomas and for obvious reasons because i got to get Griffin out of the scale here because I have Thomas as my other level four. So I'm going to go ahead and summon one. I'm going to use the Griffin Thomas. So for anyone that's like maybe questioned recently because I know we're kind of in a game. DDD players right now are kind of in a state right now where we're trying to minimize as many things we can play in our deck right now, uh, which is fully understandable. Um, and the reason... The reason why, but the reason why you need to play Thomas is because you can't, this interaction comes up literally every, at least every single match. Uh, you can't miss this interaction. Um, this is probably like the most crucial interaction, like one piece in your deck. Well, for scales, for sure. So I think it's the most crucial uh, one, one piece uh, interaction. Uh, and then when it comes to the, um, the rest of the main deck that isn't a pendulum, this is your most crucial one piece interaction. So uh, moral of the story, do not cut Thomas. You cannot cut this. I know we're trying to skin our, uh, skinny our decks down a little bit right now because uh, we have to deal with tier right now, and that's completely understandable, like I just mentioned. But you cannot cut this card down. Uh, you have to play this card by all means. So I'm going to boost Gilgamesh, add back Griffin, go ahead, summon Griffin, right? I'm going to go ahead, overlay, rank four. I mean, I was going to explain this here. Now he has a Druid Swarm. Um, so the good thing about this combo is that in any two card combo actually plays effectively through one Druid Swarm, uh, because you want to bait out, you always want to, I'll, I'll walk into this in a second. So I'm going to burn him for a thousand, lower, lower, uh, King Tell, obviously. King Tell or Gilgamesh, it doesn't matter. They're both going to leave. So, so here I'm going to send, uh, Vice Typhon. Um, if you guys are watching, you don't know the combos. I'm not going to explain the combos, but I'm going to go over the interaction points here. So... So Typhon, so I have the option to either do Typhon or Necro Slime here. I'm always going to want to, with Bestials in the format, and I have, if I have, I'm trying to get both of these in my graveyard, and then the first card I'm trying to activate is going to be Vice Typhon. Um, the way you're going to take advantage of this in this format is that not everyone's very familiar with DD at this point. They may have used to be, but they don't really know the crucial interaction points. This is the card that we really want resolving as opposed to this, and again, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't. This doesn't resolve, or if this doesn't resolve, we can still get headhunt and do some other plays. But if we have this resolve, we still have easy access to um, a rank six, right? So I'm gonna try to bait him up with uh, Typhon here. If he has a Bestial, I can play around Bestials here. Uh, so wait, he's just reading the cards, right? He's gonna try to Druid Swarm, which I want. Doesn't matter because I have Bell. So Bell's gonna stop that from activating. Uh, he's going to let me go off because he has no more interactions. I'm going to do the two cut, the one for one combo here, which is going to be fusion summon and fusion summon. And then that'll trigger to special back the, uh, Griffin. I can now chain block Griffin with the, uh, Genghis here. Right. And then Genghis can target special summon the Caesar. I, this is the card I really want resolving because right now the trap, let me just add it here. So headhunt is the reason why we can actually compete right now. Um, headhunt being able to take, um, their fusion, their fusion, is so good and then like sprite sometimes you can take their level two if they don't if you know they don't have an extender uh you stop their starter and then you can just activate headhunt and take their normal summon and they they usually just can't play around it because 
almost always their only their only way to extend is through a starter. So taking that and then in a tier, you're t almost always going to take their kick callos and it really hinders their plays, especially when you have the rank six and the uh, X, Y, Z. Um, so yeah, so this is your most important card right now. I think it has been for the last while, but so we're going to link off. I'm going to try to go for the rank six here. You know, some of the rank six. It's going to use, I'm trying to, so here's the thing. I was thinking about using these two as materials, but I wasn't anticipating him to be, I knew he was on tier. Like I knew from these interaction points um, of him being, uh, of him having the Druid Swarm and 40 cards. Um, I figured he was just on tier. So I, I didn't foresee him playing Super Poly as a lot of people have decided not to play Super Poly anymore. Um, and if I want to play around Super Poly, I would use these two. Um, but here's the thing, there's no full way to play around Super Poly because you're honestly better off just leaving some more bodies out. The reason why you can never play, fully play against Super Poly is because they can normal summon one of their bodies and then they can Super Poly to make uh, Stapelia. Stapelia or um, uh, Mud Dragon, which Mud Dragon is actually a hard card. You actually don't want to deal with Mud Dragon because um, Headhunt, tar like, you can't target anything when they resolve it. So, yeah. So, set, headhunt, pass. Um, this is a really strong board. So he's going to super poly as priority, which I understand. Uh, so he's going to use those two, right? So you're going to summon Sepelia. <laughs> so now he has some options. This hand is insane. Um, but I also have a really good interac interaction point here. Uh, the cool, the reason why this deck honestly plays okay through super poly is because you're always trying to prioritize getting the trap, which I clearly did here. And um, the Caesar is, you really can't super poly a Caesar. I mean, I guess, but like, it's usually the darks that are going to get super poly. So, um, no way you don't miss you at some point. Yeah, so you'll see that come up in a second. But um, for anyone that's watching YouTube, I'm, I have a chat going right now. So, um, yeah, so Caesar, um, again, you can't really super poly this. And this is the most effective. Uh, this is like your most effective boss monster on the board. So this is why this deck can kind of strive is because this paired with this is very hard to deal with. Typically, even this hand is going to struggle and I'll show you why in a second. It's going to start out with Perlerino. Perlerino is going to grab Havnus. Havnus is going to be really good here. Uh, so I'm going to Ash his uh, Sheeran. You always want to Ash the Sheeran. Um, reason being is because um, sometimes, I mean, with a hand like this, you're not stopping their plays fully, but it really... When Sheer resolves, it's hard, and especially if they hit any of their fairies. Um, either the Shufflers or the Millers um, is fairly dangerous. So I'm going to go ahead and let the uh, Rhino Heart resolve, because I still have two materials on this. I have Headhunt, and I know he has a Druusworm in hand. So what's going to happen here is he's going to use... I'm going to let this resolve, because I want to hit Druusworm on his first material. So I'm going to use Druusworm on his. And this is going to force out his Druusworm, essentially. And I don't want Druus... So Druusworm is a really detrimental card to our deck. Uh, the reason being is because we have no real way to stop a Druid Swarm from getting linked off, unless you take it, which is a waste of a headhunt, uh, from getting linked off into clear. It's a free clear to our boss monsters, and that's partially why we're kind of struggling right now, is because they anyone that has a Druid Swarm has a free has a has a free pass to literally just out any of our boss monsters right now. Um, and as we go through the replays, you'll see a card I'm playing right now that can definitely help with that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to Caesar his Druid Swarm, right? So basically the interaction here was the Druid Swarm that I used was meant to force out his Druid Swarm, which then um, had Caesar uh, negate it, right? So now I still have a Caesar. And, oh yeah, and then it was the Stapelia was the next thing. So I knew he was going to Stapelia, and then directly after I headhunt the Stapelia, which is nice because I still have a way to uh, stop him from resolving another play. So yeah, so Druid Swarm is going to come out. And now, since he already normal summoned, and his Havnus is stuck in hand, um, it's going to be good for me, right? So, yeah, and he thought he got it back, but it's, yeah, Headhunt is till uh, next end phase. Shout out to this water bottle, this water bottle sick. I went at uh, one of our tournaments one time. So it's now my turn. And, uh, so it's going to stretch here real quick. Um, so what's going to happen here is I'm going to take 2,000. I already did. 
Now I'm going to kind of analyze what's going on and um, I still have a Caesar that can negate and then this is going to become a machine because it's now a triple D monster. The Druus Worm is going to be really good here because I can summon, I can use a low, I can use my Orthros, I can search out an Orthros and fusion with it. The only issue is, is that I, I'm out of, um, I'm out of fusion summons, so I have to watch what I'm doing here. And here's the thing, so I got slightly greedy here, right, so summon Baron. Um, and now Druus Worm, I tried using Druus Worm and I completely forgot he normal summoned this. I thought it was a special summon, so... Uh, yeah, so um, basically, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, and then I went, what was it? Yeah, I go Machine X. And then Baron's going to try to pop the, uh, I'm trying to go for game here. So I, I definitely got a bit greedy. But what I wanted to do was try and stop um, stop his play to, um, so I was basically, so this is what I was banking on, basically. So Baron pops this. I knew he had Havness, and I stopped the Havness, and Baron stops Havness. The thing I was banking on, though, was that, um, I, well, I also initially thought Druid Swarm was just going to banish this because it already summoned, but the thing I was banking on what afterwards was the fact that this he wasn't going to have another tier card in hand, and I completely, now that I look at it, I actually forgot that he had, because he never shuffled back a Sheeran. Yeah, he never shuffled back a Sheeran, so he actually had a Sheeran in hand. So I got a bit greedy and went, I went through this pretty fast. Uh, I honestly thought I just had game. Uh, so moral of the story, don't get super greedy. Um, but this boosting this and this is pretty well giving me game, right? So that's kind of what was going through my head. Unfortunately, he gets to resolve both. So once I noticed he was going to resolve this, I knew I, I, I uh, got too greedy, which is fine. I'm still up in advantage, and I do have an imperm. So, so he's going to go ahead and resolve uh, Havnus. Um, and then I'm going to uh, have to Baron another card because he chain blocked. So again, like I was saying, I was trying to save this for the Havness and just game him. Um, yeah, again, got too greedy. It is what it is. So now he's going to summon uh, Havness. That's fine. Right, and then Perlerino is going to pop, which is a bit unfortunate. So what I should have done before this was, before I did any of this, and again, like I said, I got greedy. I went through this really quick. Uh, I should have recycled this and popped and popped. So he didn't. He wasn't even able to uh, get rid of my board. Um, if that were the case, I would have had enough damage on <clears throat> on board. So now that I look at this, now that this is the first time I'm watching this replay. Um, so basically, um, if I kept, if I decided to do this Thomas play here instead of getting super greedy and set this up popped and popped because I do this after, um, which you might see in a second here. Yeah, so I should have done this way before anything happened to play around the happiness and everything, um, and pop this because if he never if he never popped one of my um, if he never popped my machine X, I was actually just winning the game because machine X was boosted and uh, so was Caesar, so that would have just been uh, auto game. So again, I got greedy. Um, is what it is. Uh, I had to just wait it out another turn. I'm just gonna go battle. Let's fast forward this. So it's gonna put on the twelve. Yeah, so again, um, unfortunately got greedy. Um, I should, if I did the, now that I look at this, if I did the Orthros play, which I should have done way before, um, I honestly thought I just had game, but um, uh, if I did this before any monster interaction, because I knew he had Havness, um, I would have just won the game. So uh, then and there, because both my guys are boosted. So he drew, uh, yeah, he drew Kalbeck, which is insane, because he had Sharon in hand. So now this gets really interactive here. And the one thing I did miss, uh, I just I told Chad this during the uh, game was I completely missed that this got milled. If this got milled, or sorry, since this was milled, I was able to actually give myself another like link or another uh, card to start uh, to start off in my hand. Right, uh, there is no real good cards to have in my hand, but I could have put back one of my fusions, which would actually would have helped me on the bounce back. Uh, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna let him play this through. Uh, I do have one point of interaction. Yeah, and he's gonna go for a fusion here. Yeah, he's going to go right for the Kaleido Heart. So Kaleido Heart's going to target this. Um, yeah, and he chain blocks. So um, there's a question here, because I thought this got milled during the uh, Kalbeck interaction, but this actually got milled during the Aguido interaction, which means he was actually able to uh, chain block the Kaleido Heart. So, yeah. So, yeah, we kind of go over that real quick. He's going to fast forward through this. So now he's going to add Rhino Heart on Sully, um, which is actually pretty scary, but... 
Um, I'm gonna let him fusion, and I'm gonna because I know he's gonna go for um. So he's gonna go for the kick house, and this way I'm gonna imperm him. I gotta be really cautious on what I'm doing here because again, I did do a misplay last turn where I could have just ended the game, and um, I, I was getting punished for it, right? Uh, so yeah. And I think on his part, he kind of misplayed here too, because he's trying to go for dark. Uh, yeah, he re he resolves that. If he was playing, um, if he was playing uh, um, access code, I actually lost this game. Um, but he's not, so he's forced to crash, and then he's gonna do. I don't know how much damage this is. Like twenty something. So now he's gonna go sprint to fusion summon, and he's gonna just summon Rukalis and bank on it. Here's where I win. So he's only at 1200, and this is where it kind of comes into my benefit. Doesn't matter what I search here, but I pop the, uh, I'm gonna slow this down a little bit. So I'm gonna start out by popping this to clear it out of my scale, right? Um, gonna scale this, and now what I'm trying to do is since he's only at 1200, I just have to make, I still have Siegfried. I can't see that for some reason. Um, so I'm gonna go effect to recycle so I can pendulum summon two, pen two, some of the Griffin, some of the Orthros. I'm not gonna bother using Griffin's effect. Um, because now I know I have game. Um, like I said, I got too greedy. I got, honestly got a little bit cocky um, that one game. thought I had game and completely disregarded the Sheeran. Um, yeah, he, he got a little bit cheese here. You, you could tell he's a little bit salty, but he was, it's all right. Um, technically, I have, to, I have to ask him if I'm for battle phase because he does have card interactions. And I could also do a. Um, I also could interact at that point too. Not in the, not in a quick sense, but I could also relay a play. So, I think he's just a bit salty. All right. So going on to game two again. Game one should have been over um, uh, on my on turn three on my turn two. Uh, I just got a bit greedy. Okay. So moving on. Uh, this hand's crazy. Uh, the heartbeat was really good here. Uh, you're gonna. I didn't expect Heartbeat, um, we'll, just, we'll just put it that way, but uh, yeah, again, really good hand. Uh, Instant Fusion, I mean, I don't even have to say how good this hand is. Uh, my hand's looking really good too, but against Instant Fusion, it's a bit hard sometimes. So, um, yeah, I know. I know, Alex, it's crazy. There's so many mad people today, but yeah. So I'm just going to, again, I'm going to ask the Sheeran. A lot of people miss this, but um, myself included. Um, yeah, Instant Fusion popped this at end phase. I completely forgot that this was summoned by Instant Fusion. And then I hovered over his graveyard and um, noticed the Instant Fusion was in there. So this is why Instant Fusion is crazy is because it's just going to pop Kick Callus at the end of the turn. So we're just going to let him do his thing. And uh, yeah, just going to fast forward. I'm going to hold the Ghost Bell until I, I really need to use it. So I think he tries to use Havnus here. After he's fusion summons here, yeah, I'm gonna. I want to stop the Havnus. So I draw Swirl Slime here, which is crazy. It was definitely the best. Um, this was definitely the best um, draw I could have gotten because again, he has Heartbeat here, so he has really good setup, right? Uh, he can Havnus on my turn. Doesn't have a Shuffler yet, and the Rukalos. So yeah, he's just reading Swirl Slime. Yeah, he's going to have this, and he already has, I didn't expect the second have this to come down because he popped the one from his hand from Rukalos. Going to go ahead, use kit. I mean, he could just add it again if he wanted to, but he's going to go ahead and send. So maybe I should have read that he had a second have this here, but I kind of disregarded that. Just going to let him do his thing. Right, he's going to go for Stapelia, which is pretty good here. Um, Normals like Copernicus use the effect. Um, he's going to go Havnus again. I didn't expect the Havnus to come down here. He's going to go Sapelia, which I want him using Sapelia here because um, I only have access to two-card combo now, uh, so I can link off. Um, I completely, you'll see in a second, I completely forget about the um, the effect where it makes my guy level two. <clears throat> so I try to go for uh, five material Zeus here. I'll fast forward this. So yeah, I have to go for the link. Um, and the link here is going to give me some options. I can make the level. The problem is he has a Medora, but I can play around it in the sense where, 
not fully, I'm still going to be hindering, but like I can scale up the uh, Ragnarok. And then once he shuffles back my first interaction, if he doesn't shuffle back the um, uh, the um, X, one of the XYZs, then I can still get a fusion play out, um, which would be all right. So I could still get the, the uh, rank six um, through one shuffler, typically, depending on what he shuffles back. Um, so I'm going to scale up, and this is where it all just kind of goes downhill. He has a heartbeat. I didn't see the heartbeat coming. I just had to scoop here. So, yeah. So the heartbeat is kind of detrimental um, when you lose your scale, right? So moving on to game three. Okay. So moving on to game three, we got a really good hand. And the nice thing, the thing that's kind of keeping DD afloat right now is that um, these cards all stop the opponent from playing on our turn. So DD Crow is actually a really good card. Um, it stops it stops the happiness interaction, and so does this, right? So his hand's Merly, uh, so he opened three normal summons. Terraforming can kind of help with that. Uh, happiness is a good... So it's not the worst open. Um, it's not like he bricked. Um, it's just not a great open. But, I mean, if you open Terraforming, like, is it a bad open with names and a happiness? It's not a bad open, right? So um, we open pretty good. We open map, Griffin, Orthros, DD Crow, Ash Blossom. So this hand's going to be pretty interesting to watch play out. Uh, Map's going to grab us the Kepler. Kepler's going to be normal summon. We're going to search the... Uh, he's going to activate Havnus. You want to you wanna save Ash for the Havnus all the time. Uh, Swirl Slime comes down. You're going to go Swirl Slime, right? Uh, Swirl Slime is now... Um, so I'm going to kind of walk through this now. So Banish... I'm going to special the Orthros. So now I am locked into Fiends, right? Um, Griffin's going to add the Trap. And um, so since I started out with Piri, I'm essentially forced to go for uh, to special this from my hand instead of normal summoning it uh, for a Baron, but it's not going to matter here and you're going to see why. So here's a new tech I've been playing. Uh, it's Bright Armageddon. So Bright Armageddon is extremely good right now, I find, and it's going to help some problems the deck's having. Like, Drus the main reason why I'm playing this is because uh, no, well, number one would be um, tier, tier elements cannot really deal with this card. Except that unless if they summon a uh, Baguska or a Zeus, it, it kind of really hinders what they can do. And then you can kind of have an advantage playing the next turn because they're kind of scrambling. Um, the biggest reason for this, though, is because Drusworm targets. And uh, Drusworm's, uh, the interaction for the, for the opponent is too free when they can summon a Drusworm. So I figured I'd just have, I have to find a way to play this because... The fact that this card just reads your opponent cannot target your opponent cannot target monster you control with card effects is really broken. Uh, so yeah. Um, anyways, it also the other cool thing about this too is that um, if you've seen there where I had to special summon the uh, where I had to special summon the Orthros because of Piri, I can still manage to summon a powerhouse card, a level ten powerhouse because it's a fiend itself, right? It's part of the DD lore, I guess you would say. I'm going to go ahead and I'm scaling this because I, I can't take any more burn. I use Peary. And then anytime you use Peary, you got to use this. I'm going to go through. Next play, next play, next play. So Pendulum Summon 2. I'm going to overlay. Link these two off. So uh, I just summoned the Caesar instead of the uh, rank 5 because I just I want to get a contract here. Uh, contract gives me another interaction point with uh, Machine X. And all I have to do is just revive back the rank 6. And then that's it. So... This is my board here. This is very strong going to tier. Um, and he's got every single name. He's got access to every single name, which is pretty in insane. Uh, and then he draws Kelbeck. Kelbeck's actually a really good draw. Um, but having the Crow and the Caesars um, and the, the fact that they can't target. So Kelbeck's turned off, but they can still do the Fusion Summons. So, or the Mill. So starting off the Terraforming. It's always pretty scary when they start off the uh, Planet. This Planet's like pretty strong, but Planet... You gotta you gotta make it so that you can um, planet's gonna like kind of miss its timing because the only card planet can really pop is they're gonna try to pop the headhunt right. So the only time they're gonna be able to pop the headhunt is once they've already committed to their first fusion summon. So I can take the kick callos. Usually they're gonna summon kick callos. So uh, yeah, and he's gonna add the Sharon of course, and he's probably gonna pitch a callback. I'm gonna stop this. I do not want Sharon coming out because the main thing I'm trying him not. I don't want him to summon a rank four. It's what I don't want. Because I can deal with his fusions right now. Um, I basically have three ways to stop the fusions. Uh, this and the crow. So Sheeran is going to be dealt with with this and a crow, which I find kind of insane that I have to use two interactions to deal with a freaking Sheeran. 
So yeah, now that that's dealt with, um, and that he's normal summon, I know I'm in a pretty good spot because there isn't really anything else they can extend with unless they have happiness, which he does have happiness. I knew he had happiness because I asked it. And I'm going to stop the happiness from coming down. And I'm quite okay with him doing a fusion summon because I can now take it. So I can suck this up. I just stopped, I just don't want him making a rank 4 is basically what's going on here. Because I can deal with the next fusion summon he does. Now he's going to do 2, which I'm okay with. Let him do that. Because one of these is going to have to be... Okay, so yeah. So yeah, he quit there. Um, Basically... Whatever fusion he's going to summon, he might he can't summon Sapelia, he can summon the level 6, but he can't normal summon, and then I just take Kit. Uh, once I take Kit, that's game. So this is basically the one reason why this deck can strive right now is because this card, and this this actually deals with their effects really well, too. So, yeah, so that was a game. Um, it was definitely a great match to watch. Um, and now I'm going to go over my deck list. Um, everyone on my stream probably knows exactly what I'm playing, but I'm going to go ahead. So this is the list I've been running for the last couple streams now, and I love the way it works. So, yeah, it's a 45 card list, <clears throat> and I kind of get I kind of get to break down why this uh, why this is built this way. So, um, basically, uh, three three Griffin, three Copernicus, three Kepler, uh, three Swirl Slime, uh, double Orthros, uh, three Gate, three Peary. Um, this is kind of maybe maybe I should like kind of put these up here. So, yeah, and then these can kind of go over here, right? I don't know why Dueling Book doesn't, like, have these properly organized, but, uh, yeah, so uh, three Sword Sign, Double Capern, or Orthros, uh, the one of um, one Rage, one Thomas, uh, one Ragnarok. So um, that's it for the Pendulum one of. Now, you'll, you'll notice I'm not running Cerberus, and I'm going to tell you right now, you don't need Cerberus at all. Um, the last... How long has it been since I haven't been running Cerberus? I haven't ran Cerberus like since I've been doing these streams. Um, I did for the, the first couple of them. And then I ran, um, I decided to cut it because I found in all the testing I did, uh, Cerberus never once came up for me ever. And ever since I cut it, I've never needed it. You need Rage, like Rage you need with the period. And there's also the interactions where Rage is going to be good. You need kind of need in your scale to summon back for next turn, uh, the Kepler. So it gives you good recursion, but the Cerberus, you'll, I've never needed Cerberus, like in, out of all these games, never needed it once. So um, for whoever's still playing DD, you do not need to play Cerberus at all. It's, it's honestly a bad card, if I'm going to be honest, uh, but you do need Rage, especially if you're playing the, if you're playing Pyrrhon map anyways, you need Rage. <clears throat> uh, so for these one of these don't change, um, you have to play these. There's no negotiations on this. Um, the reason why you, these are more important than ever now, actually, is because when you do your two-card combo, instead of foolishing, instead of when you summon the XYZ and you pop it to foolish the field spell, you're actually doing a link first to some, send this, so you have two cards to fusion with right off the bat before they can bestial, so they have to have two bestials to actually stop you from doing something, and then you, you can still summon a Machine X uh, and then uh, summon this back with a two-card combo, which is pretty good, and it gives you this. So... Uh, three, anyways, uh, three gate, uh, for the consistency, three gate, three peery, one, one for one. And then, um, so these are just our consistency cards. So basically the way the deck, uh, work, I'll just kind of go over the rest of the DD cards. One, one, one. Um, so basically the way the deck works, if you guys kind of want, uh, to see how, uh, let me just move these around. So this doesn't go here. This doesn't go here. This goes here. So there's cards that interact with each other on a two card combo. And I know some of these, like... All of these with a gate act as a two-card combo, but um, when you put these 21 cards here, all interact as a two-card combo, essentially, unless you open, like, two Orthros or, like, an Orthros and this, but they all essentially act as a two-card combo. So 21 cards as a two-card combo uh, gives you... I just did all the calculations here, but um, it gives you a... Basically, the way it works out is that every, out, of, out of every 10 games, you'll have nine... Uh, nine playable hands, and then you should have one unplayable hand out of ten games, which is it's fair. Um, it's not tier level, but it's that's like a tier two consistency basis. So having the twenty one cards is like been thought out. Like I've gone through this a lot and done the math. Uh, the twenty the twenty one inter the twenty one cards that interact as a two card two plus card combo is um, 
is the effective way to go about it. Then you also got to think that there's other cards that interact with each other. Like this can still act with Kepler as a two card combo. This can act as a two card combo. Like so can these, right? So there's other things like that, right? So um, yo, congrats on placing the second. I'll have to read that over after, but um, so yeah. Um, now going into the hand trap lineup, I play 15. So I feel like you need to play 15 cards. Um, I'll kind of go over why I'm playing 15 hand traps. So these are all good in the sense, A, that they're stopping tier limits, and they're also stopping anything that's like rogue or somewhat, somewhat metal like Sprite. Um, these nine hand traps all cover everything, like Sprite, Flounderese, everything, and they're really effective. Ash is insane against tier, um, and so is this. Um, I haven't drawn Valor like once out of like all today for some reason, but um, but these here, so basically Bell, Bell and Ash are the cards that are going to protect you from uh, cards like Habness and um, Bestials, and the cards that they're foolishing on your turn that are going to fusion summon, like with Bell. Um, and then Drew's Worm is a really good Bestial. Now you're probably wondering why I'm not playing Magma even in my side. Here's the reason why I'm not playing Magma. So we all tested this. Uh, I was testing this for a while on uh, Dueling Book. The reason why I don't play Magma is because once they take a Magma from your graveyard and they're playing tier, they benefit the, off the Magma way more than you do because the Bestials really hurt you and you can't give them advantage like that. So I decided to ultimately not play Magma as a whole because yes, it's awesome that you can summon it, but and then just add on end phase. The problem is, too, though, is that you don't really have a way to get all those bodies off board as number one, as whereas you just have this, you can usually synchro it off with um, Orthros, usually. And But the big problem I had with Magnuma, the main thing was that they were always taking it with Dark, and they are getting much more advantage out of it than I was myself, because we have a problem with playing around Bestials. You basically just don't want to give them free access to Druiswarm, because Druiswarm is a very big problem for this deck to deal with. Uh, so that's why I'm not playing Magnuma anywhere. So yeah, 15 hand traps, and these are honestly the best proven hand traps that have been working through this format for me, and should be moving forward. Uh, 30 DD cards as a whole, 45. So the math behind 45, you're going to see, you have a 56% chance to see more than one hand trap in your hand, which is awesome. You typically see two to three, uh, pretty evenly between two and three. Um, and then um, when it comes to the two card interactions and the one card combos, you have about a 90% chance to open a uh, combo, essentially. So it's like a tier two consistency formula. And when we're moving on to the side deck, um, so we're playing Gamma Package, which is really good into uh, Flunder and uh, Sprite. Uh, so Talents, this card's amazing going first. It's also really good. In, uh, I don't put it in because I have all the room going second for a uh, tier. If I'm playing second, if I'm playing tier, I'm going to put these in, all these cards in. Um, so these will all go in into tier. Maybe just two Crow, because uh, I usually have seven cards I can take out. The eight cards is a little bit hard. I can't find room unless I take out like a bell maybe. Um, but yeah, these all go into tier, right? So the way the side patterns work is the reason why I'm playing 45 is because I want to play all these, but I also can't make room for my side deck. So I kinda have to, I'm kind of forced to play 45, but it's been working really good. Um, so yeah, I've actually been loving the 45 cards. It's been consistent. It's been consistent and I'm seeing, it's, space, it's helping to space out my bricks. So I'm not seeing these as much as I used to be with 40 cards. So it's pretty nice. Uh, so yeah, a lot of people are asking right now in the chat about Small World. Um, I don't play Small World, um, not in this format. Now there is an interesting thing where you could play like a 40 card list with Small World where you play nine Bestials and uh, three DD Crow where you don't have to play a bridge, which is cool. So if you guys wanna play Small World, you can play a 40 card list that you, you won't need, um, you won't need Rage if you play uh, Small World. You can play a 40 card list that plays 12 hand traps in a Small World and you don't need a bridge because um, DD Crows and the Bestials all bridge with each other. <clears throat> so it's pretty awesome that, in that sense. So yeah, um, but for me, Peary is a lot better because it's in this format because it, um, I don't really know if there's a way for me to explain this. It's just been working a lot better. And I don't like sacrificing a card in this format where I need to be up in advantage um, completely um, because the big thing with Small World before was that you were trying to go for Baron lines where Baron was the best line to go for. It usually won you the match if you went into Baron. Um, in the previous formats, and now uh, your Baron line isn't the most effective. I'm actually like rarely going to Baron. Uh, whenever I have the three card combo and I can't like have that fourth normal summon for the Orthros, I always just grab the Headhunt because this card's the most broken card in the deck right now. That's why I play Peary over Small World. Yeah, to moral moralize it, Small World was way better in like the 
when there was no tier zero, like before Power of the Elements, and now you don't really want to play Small World because you need to be up in advantage, and the Baron combo isn't that crazy unless you have access to Headhunt as well. So that's the only time I'll go for Baron combo going first. Other than that, Baron comes up when I'm going second and stuff. Uh, so going on the fusions, this is kind of standard. Uh, this is well, this is standard. Uh, you could play Dark if you want. Sometimes I do miss having the uh, the other DD card, but the reason why you don't always need it too, I find, is because since you're getting milled by your opponent a lot, this card when this card gets milled, you can actually put this back in, like one of these back in, which is actually pretty cool. Um, if you just seen that that replay, I just did. I actually missed that interaction. Um, but yeah, um, that it does happen where I have to put them back or a link uh, for synchros. So these two are standard. This is not. Um, I think this should be standard moving forward because the fact that it protects, it literally just reads um, Bright Armageddon. Literally just reads your opponent uh, cannot target monster control with card effects. I kind of explained before. I did explain before during that match why it's good. It's because Druid Swarm is a big issue and it kind of shuts down Druid Swarm. And it's hard for a lot of decks to out like Sprite and Tear are going to have a hard time, right? So. Basically, um, Bright Armageddon. Um, Bright Armageddon. Also, you can summon it as you've seen in that replay, where you activate Pyrian, you have to normal summon, and then you have to special this. Uh, special this. It's it's going to be like it's basically your Baron replacement when you have to special Orthros. So that's what I like about it. Uh, two of this standard. One, 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 one. I don't have to explain this. And then three. Um, I tried playing this at two, I think, for one stream, and it just didn't work. Uh, you missed too many combos, and then you have to play too tediously. So yeah. Yeah, so that is it for the video. Um, I mean, whoever's on stream still, um, I'm actually pretty well getting off because I kind of have to get off here. Um, but yeah, so if you guys like that deck profile, this is most likely the exact list I'm taking to Toronto with me. Um, I do think it works really well. Uh, there is a high chance that I might just get completely blown out of the water because tier is insane, depending on how well tier players draw into me. Um, but you never you never know. Sometimes it doesn't matter depending on how good you open. And I think all these hand traps do a really good job in stopping Tier from doing their thing and to help me kind of do my thing. Because if I can do my thing and I can get the rank, usually if I can just get the rank 6 and this out and they don't have a Jurus Worm access, I usually win the game. It's pretty hard. And then the, the field spell has a really good interaction point too. So, yeah, so I hope you guys like that video. And uh, we'll see you in the next one after the Toronto Regionals. Peace. All right. <clears throat> So that's it for that. Um, I'm not going to open this while I'm on stream. Um, yeah, so anyways. I didn't I didn't do any. Oh, it's, this is organized, so I'm actually going to save this. Yeah, so that's 4 o'clock. That was one match. I thought it was going to be on for like 3, to be honest. But um, yeah, so Zeus is and it isn't relevant. Um, the reason why Zeus is relevant though is because it's really needed, and I found this a lot. I do need it into like Splendor and Sprite. It's 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 not for it's not for um tier essentially, it's for like the other matchups. No, not Vice King. Vice King doesn't do anything for you to be honest. Um I really don't think the card's good. It's not worth the the spot, so yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sick though. DD is definitely good on a locals level, depending on how many decks are going to your locals. The thing I find about that knowing about my locals is that there's three tier players, including myself, um, and not a, and we all we also don't always play tier, like especially me. Um, the last couple locals we haven't had any tier, but everyone still sides like tier is like the number one deck there. So or like plays their cards like there's like nine bestials in everyone's deck and like. So it's annoying for me to deal with sometimes. So it's like indirectly get hit by it, right? So, and I can expect that at a regionals. I mean, the last locals I went to, I went um, out of five rounds, I only lost one. And the only reason why I dropped the one against Sprite was because um, I literally opened, this is my hand game three against Sprite, uh, going first two, which sucked. I would have won if I had a playable hand. So it was this, this, uh, this, and this. So these these five cards was my hand game three going first. It was actually ridiculous. I just basically like I acted like I had a good hand, and I fusion summoned and fusion summoned and linked into Gilgamesh and just passed with this face down. It was 
so bad. No, I cut Peary, or I cut Punisher because um, I just tried testing it for a few games, and it never came up. Um, the problem with Punisher, too, is that people can just uh, um, overlay into Baguska and just deal with it that way. Um, this card, though, is um, nice for stopping. I'd rather play this because it's more useful for cards like this. Because I can't, I can't, it's so annoying when they have a Druus Worm and you can't deal with it. It's just like, so all these cards stop Druus Worm from resolving. A, well, these three cards stop Druus Worm from, Druus Worm from resolving. Um, this doesn't. Um, but you might want to find a way to get this out if they have Druus Worm. So, yep. Anyways, I hope you guys like the stream because it's now 4 o'clock and I'm set to get off and just enjoy the rest of my night. So, yeah, I will see you guys in the next stream. See you later. I hope you guys like that match, by the way. I think I just exit this out.